your house, your budget, your retirement, your investments. If you cannot speak money, you are lost. That's right. Welcome to a special edition of Your Money. Christine Romans, host of Your Bottom Line and co-author of our brand new book, How to Speak Money. Christine, you and I are just like any couple. We're not married, but we certainly do disagree <laughs> on money, and we have for the last 10 years. Uh, what would you say, I've never asked you this, what's your key to understanding money? My key to understanding money is that we must live below our means and put a little bit away to build wealth for the future and that's going to give that's going to give cushion and that's going to allow us to have a, a, a less stressful life quite frankly. This is why we've been fighting for 10 years. Why? Because you don't put money away. I think money is something that you should use to get more money, you should seize opportunity, See, you should take measured thing. risks. He likes to risk his money to grow more. I like to save mine because I don't want to lose it and that's the way a lot of men and women are and that's frankly the way a lot of space spenders and savers are at the end of the day she has a minivan <laughs> and he's got a motorcycle a perfect metaphor uh, neither of us is intimidated to enter the world of money but in our relationships or in dealing with any part of this economy our goal for you this hour is that by the end of this hour you will feel confident about money and you will be able to speak money in your job uh, with your mortgage banker with your spouse uh, with a little more confidence we wrote a book about it but we didn't do it alone here to help you for the hour our good friend Jeff Gardier he's a clinical psychologist, Doug Flynn, a certified financial planner from Flynn Zito Capital Management, Lynette Calfani Cox, the founder of AskTheMoneyCoach.com, and Luis Barajas, a personal wealth advisor. Welcome to all of you. Nice to see Thank you guys. Luis, I want to ask you first about speaking money. We, you, we've talked about this before. Yeah. There are people who think they can't speak money, and they think that they live paycheck to paycheck. Maybe they're putting a little bit away in a 401k, but beyond that, it's, it's a completely foreign language to them. That's going to hold them back, isn't it? Absolutely. But you know what? Speaking money, everybody speaks money. I, I just go back to they're just not aware of how they're speaking money and what their right. money's for. And like I've always said, you know, the purpose of money is to live a better life. And I've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. You know, right. no one's taking anything with them. It's right. like, how do we use the money to live a better quality of life? That's the most important part of it. And it's not about the pursuit of money at, the, at all costs, because, you know, that's all suspicious in right. its own right. And that's, we're not about that, right? We but, are not about you, that. You often say uh, that when you think about, you know, Lewis just said every, all these decisions about money, everybody speaks money. You don't necessarily know when you're making a decision. So when your kid comes home with a report card that's not that's right. appropriate, are you mad because they didn't study or are you worried that, oh my goodness, my kid's future just got flushed down the toilet because he didn't, you know, do the right thing in math? Lynette. That's right. And as a mom of three kids, I can <laughs> attest to that because you're thinking, oh, if they're not going to do well in school, does that mean they're not going to be able to get a good job? They're not going to have the economic and career advancement that we all want, you know? And so I think at the end of the day, though, when it comes to sort of speaking money, it's true that all of us do, to a certain degree, speak money every single day. We pay our credit card bills. We <clears throat> fill up the gas tank. You know. We we worry about the mortgage, et cetera, et cetera. But for a lot of people, they don't feel confident about their skills in a certain area. It might right. be in the investing space, long-term planning, right. insurance, whatever. And that's the sort of overwhelming feeling I think that a lot of Americans but have. The thing about Allie and I, Jeff, is that Allie is the, the spender yeah. and I'm the saver. It physically pains me to spend too much money. Allie yeah. likes and to And it physically be pains me to see how she saves it. It's true, but <laughs> yeah. it's true. But the thing is, is that he makes his money grow and that's his goal. And mine is to make sure I have enough for three 529s and a retirement at the end for me. People are different. That doesn't mean that either of us is wrong. No, absolutely not. And, and the important thing, and, and, and looking at what uh, Lynette is saying, uh, when as parents we do have these differences, the yin and the yang, we talked about this before, uh, I think it's so important that we model these behaviors for our children right. so that they do get a good balance of the parent who may want to risk more versus the one who may want to save more, and then they develop their own style. But as Lewis says, when it comes to speaking about money, we all do it. But it's important that we do it in front of our children right. without making them crazy because we want to bring them into the culture of understanding what investment and saving is all about so that it becomes part we of their lives. We don't even do it in front of each other sometimes. Right. I mean, right. when, you're, right. when you're intimidated yeah. by money, uh, uh, Doug, you deal with people who I think they come to you as a financial planner because they think they've got money problems to solve, debt, savings, investments. When in fact, they're, they're not talking the same language, they're not speaking money the same way to each other. Not at all. Oftentimes they haven't really had those conversations together and, and getting in the room and speaking about it is one of the first times they've actually laid it all out there. Uh, it's something really important to do, to understand where you're coming from, who is the saver, who's the spender typically, 
there is one or the other. Uh, you can actually survive if you have two savers. It's very difficult to do that if you have two spenders. So uh, it's an interesting dynamic. But you start to learn about <laughs> what's important to both of you and work it out. It's just a matter of uh, opening the communication like anything else in your life, getting it out there and understand once you know that you can get on a, uh, on a path to make it happen. But you know what I also often tell couples who feel like they're financial opposites, you know? I think God played a cruel joke on most of us who are married <laughs> at some, to a certain extent to invariably pair up sure. a saver with a spender, a splurger with an extreme hoarder. It's really not the case that if you're financial opposites, your relationship is doomed and it's never going to work out or anything. No, you really all. can get on the same financial page, don't you agree, Jeff? Yeah. And it's, it's, the, it's a matter of the communication. Like yeah. you said, when they come to you, it's the first time they've ever talked about it or whatever. But couples need to realize, even if you have different money styles, different money personalities, once you start speaking money and assessing your joint goals, you can get on the same page and, and together it can be, and make it, it work. It could be a compromise. You learn from one another sure. where you become less of a spender or less of a saver, where you try to find that balance. And you do need uh, the pro and the con in this thing because you're not going anywhere because you're stuck in this uh, whole idea, this climate of being comfortable. And I so I make each other a little bit more uh, I think that's part less of why comfortable. Most people are attracted to each other, that they offset right. each other a little bit. And, and it works really well. Those are some of the good things that, that can come out of Yeah, but the problem is that for some people, financial planning, money is about a product. For other people, it's about a process. You're looking to create opportunities, what products are out there available for you. You're thinking, you know what, when I get to a certain age, I don't want to be stressed out. I don't want to live on the streets. I want to be financially comfortable. And even though you may have the same end result, you're going to approach it very differently. Right. And if you don't have a buy-in for each person, you're never going to reach the goal, especially if you've got a partner that is totally different and opposite, yin, the yin-yang. And the things right. have changed so much recently, too, because to be quite honest, uh, there are a lot of people who were planning for the future who are now planning for the right now. And what I hope in the next 45, 50 minutes we can do is talk about how even if you're planning for the right now, you are still putting a little bit away for the future because that's what the whole goal is for everyone. So the whole point of speaking money, which you and I have learned from each other, is that if you kind of roughly speak the same language, you know what the, the the words are you know the vocabulary right Lewis just said buy-in you can get buy-in to the other person's approach I don't actually have to take it from your approach and you don't have to take it from mine but if I kind of get where you're coming from right. it makes it easier to understand and then you finally realize I'm right <laughs> many and times, right many the times over the last decade you know, that we, has happened we fight about money right. and we bet you do as well the difference um, we're going to do it on CNN right in front of you uh, one of us is an overspender one of us is an underspender can you guess the answer and why it's so important to understand and how to fix it Fix him next.